wow, this is actually kind of really exciting. So yesterday there was an announcement that there's a new AI engineer called Devin. No, not you, Devin. From Cognition Labs, an uh, AI engineer called Devin. So Devin seems to be this autonomous agent that allows you to give them instructions as if they were a software engineer and him complete them. And the video is actually pretty wild. And you know what, I'm, I'm going to go over the announcement line by line and also the video frame by frame and give you my impression. I've been doing this, I've been a software engineer for 15 years and I've been following AI like uh, advancements pretty closely. This is actually pretty crazy to watch, but let's just dive into the post. All right, so here's the post. Devin is, is claiming to be the new state of the art uh, on the software bench coding benchmark. I, that's worded weirdly. Uh, and has successfully passed practical engineering interviews. This doesn't really impress me. The practical engineering interviews, if it's in an interview, then it's not really a hard problem. If you're expected to finish a task and solve a problem within an hour or two, that's not really a hard problem. And nearly everyone knows that has gone through an engineering interview knows that um, it's kind of a very robotic process and you just got to learn the rules and the algorithms and the process to do well on those interviews. So that's perfect for a bot, and that's not really that interesting. Uh, and has even completed real jobs in Upwork. That also doesn't really surprise me that much. Uh, some of those jobs are pretty straightforward. They just need the work done. Um, the demo that they had was actually kind of interesting down below of what the, the job was in Upwork. But again, um, it's progress, but nothing like earth shattering in my eyes. It's an autonomous agent that solves engineering tasks through its own shell code editor and web browser. Okay, that's bananas to me uh, for multiple reasons. For the most part, like letting AI just run through these kind of things in their own environment, um, I immediately just think of like so many different like cons security concerns. Like if they're doing real work, there's a lot of like secrets involved. There's a lot of concerns about uh, right 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 guards of like whether or not you want to delete rows from a database interact with the database or even an api you gotta be super careful that the ai is not doing destructive actions that it's more of a curiosity and there's just a bunch of security concerns in that regards but that's all stuff that you can work out that can get better in the future like right now that's like one of my main concerns it's wild that you can do its own shell editor and browser but uh you got to think about the side effects and what they're able to do and what they're able to prevent it from doing. That's still cool. So this was the big thing is this uh, SWE bench benchmark, which is uh, where they have AI try to solve real world open source projects. And Devin correctly solved about 14% of it unassisted. That's pretty sweet. And, it, and before it was only like 2% or like if you helped it, it was like 5%. Um, I love this benchmark, but there's one big fault I have with it is this part, open source projects. Um, I, I understand that that's the only way that you can really train this because you're not going to get proprietary code to really like play with uh, real business problems. But uh, I, f I feel like this is the kiddie pool. This I feel like open source projects are not going to be as big, as complicated, and as sensitive as like real corporate uh uh large large code bases uh so i could see ai falling on its face when you get to like real legacy code this is still impressive but there's still like a long ways for this to be really interesting and there's a lot of um concerns with that is that you also need the company to like sign off on having an ai like con uh, ingest all of your code so that it can learn off of that and then be able to try to solve issues or real tickets. Um, I don't see a lot of companies being very excited to just be able to like open up their code for this to happen. But maybe maybe there's there are ways where you can like, but eventually I imagine there's going to be a, a Devin that's able to be self-contained or be able to be run on site versus like through the network. Um, Maybe, I don't know, but that's a lot, that's a lot. One other thing that I have kind of a huge issue with is open source projects is that's um, isolated on one 
problem. So it's isolated into one library or one application, but uh, real uh, real world software engineering, especially nowadays, people are like really pushing microservices. I hate microservices, but that's fine. But like, if you're trying to solve problems in multiple code bases and having the AI be trained and knowledgeable about how all those uh, services and how these all these other libraries like match up and work together, that's a different issue. That's a different uh, uh, problem. It can get complicated super quickly, especially when you start thinking about libraries and their versioning and uh, what version this service is using versus what that's using and how each of the parts of the application are supposed to communicate with one another. Um, like I said, I think the open source projects is a very uh, kiddie pool example. They they do have complicated, big, mature projects out there. But I'm wondering if the 14% of the issues that are solved are on those complicated ones versus issues found on smaller applications. Still exciting, but I feel like there's still a long ways to go there. I'm Scott from Cognition AI, and today I'm really excited to introduce you to Devin, the first AI software engineer. Let me show you an example of Devin in action. I'm gonna ask Devin to benchmark the performance of Llama on a couple different API providers. From now on, Devin is in the driver's seat. First, Devin makes a step-by-step -step plan of how to tackle the problem. Okay, I love this part, is that it's mapping out how it's approaching all the problems. Uh, this problem that it's giving isn't that exciting? It's uh, interacting with uh, newer technologies and comparing them, but uh, this could be a real task for like more junior engineers, but um, it's super interesting that it's gonna run off and do this on its own uh, console and everything. After that, it builds a whole project using all the same tools that a human software engineer would use. Devin has its own command line its own code editor. This is another thing about security that I think is really interesting that they're going to have to try to solve is how to handle appropriate uh, secret storage of like, if you want AI to act like an actual engineer, then you need to have some level of trust of giving it these kind of secrets and trust that it will never get leaked outside of its own container. I'm assuming it's, it's uh, in its own container. But uh, when you give them real keys, you're also giving it the permission and the ability to do destructive actions on any of these services, for example. That's something they have to consider. And even its own browser. In this case, Devin decides to use the browser to pull up API documentation so that it can read up and learn how to plug into each of these APIs. That's sweet. That's sweet because that's something that is a big pain in the butt to do over and over again as a software engineer, if Devin can help you ramp up on all these APIs and be able to uh, collaborate with it, that's a really cool feature. Here Devin runs into an unexpected error. Devin actually decides to add a debugging print statement. Reruns the code with the debugging print statement and then uses the error in the logs to figure out how to fix the bug. See, this is super interesting in my eyes because it's trying to debug, but it's it's going at the level of the console out so that... So in order for this to work, it has to use print statements to understand what the output is versus like... Um, breakpoints and dealing with the, the the local data at the time. This is super fascinating, but I want to see what happens in the near future. Finally, Devin decides to build and deploy a website with full styling as the visualization. This has been done before. All of this is possible today because of the advancements that we've made in both reasoning and long-term planning. It's a really hard problem, and we've only... Oh, this is them. This is re them regurgitating the fact that they uh, solved uh, fourteen percent of issues unassisted, uh, which is a huge increase. But again, we're talking about open source projects, open source issues, and issues that are only uh, scoped to just one, uh, one application, one repo. Um, when you start integrating these sort of libraries in these applications, 
That's when things get complicated fast, and that's what I want AI to help me with. But uh, I guess we're not there yet. We just started, but we're super excited about the progress that we've made so far. Okay, so this isn't like earth shattering to me, but it is super exciting. What makes me more excited is like the path they're choosing and the path that they're gr they're growing to, like actually doing software engineering work. Um, it's, it's a step in the right direction, but there's still like a long ways to go. Uh, I also looked at the comments and some of the other examples. Let's pull those up too. Okay, now looking at this, this is the thing. And then one of the first things is uh, uh, it can learn how to use unfamiliar technologies. And uh, this this is pretty cool, but it seems a lot more in line with like uh, Dolly and uh, image manipulation. And it just feels more mature in that sense. And I feel like there's technology on it that's like spinning up the, the static websites pretty easily. Pretty cool, but I don't know how many companies are gonna be asking for this kind of work. Contribute to mature production repositories. Now you might think that that's me, that's criticizing my comment earlier, but it's not. If, if when you look at this, it's a mature like uh, algebra library that they're trying to debug, which is still pretty interesting, but again, self-contained in a very specific library. That's not like an average use case for software engineering or web development and how integrated everything works. Um, it's a step in the right direction and it's exciting how it can start debugging like that. And I feel like this is more of a advancement of it being a tool of how the software engineers can enhance how they work. It'd be good for like pair programming if you're with uh, this Devon AI. Devon can train and fine tune its own AI models. This is awesome. This is, this is promise for like the future when you start advancing your own code base. And if you do have one of these agents inside of your business, inside of your team, then you're going to need this kind of skill to be able to like uh, pivot and manipulate uh, what it has learned so far so that it can be more productive in the future. So this is like a, this is a pretty solid foundational move. And this is what they said earlier about uh, giving real jobs and Upwork and it can do those too. Yeah. Yeah. So some of these Upwork jobs are pretty straightforward. Um, it's not crazy. Um, I feel like that's something that people can already do today. So that doesn't blow me away that much. So what's my take? What do I think about this? I think this is a wild, huge step in the right direction of having AI be someone that you can like work with. But um, I don't know, maybe I'm just overly critical, but there's a lot of things that I want to see it do. And this is something that like people think that I, uh, you might think that I hate the, the idea that I, I'm so much better than AI. No, I want this technology to advance because there's so much about my job and the things that I do that I'd rather have a robot helping me <laughs> going through it or even replacing some of the work that I'd like to do, that's fine. So that being said, I want this to advance. I want things like this to grow into like being real coworkers in a sense, real AI coworkers. But what I'm seeing here is something that I, I don't think it's it's there yet. The biggest steps that, I'm, that I wanna see are it being able to go into enterprise level, like large, large code bases that are not open source, that they're not trained on, and seeing how well that you can train with your existing code base and how it can ingest, I don't know, like 30 applications and how they all interact with one another and then learn and be productive from then because that's half the battle of debugging or trying to ad advance new feature work is where it needs to go, where the problem is. And it's not just like a line of code. It could be an entire application or it can be a different service or it can be a library. Or it could be a library that you don't own that you have to try to figure out uh, how to uh, work around the issue if the bug in that library hasn't been solved in itself. So there's, there's so many different factors, and I feel like Devin and all this AI is focusing on one part of it. When we start getting into better ideas of like how it can holistically uh, assess an entire system, that's when things will start getting cool. This Devin is wild. This is pretty cool, uh, but it's not earth shattering yet. Uh, I'm going to keep working. I don't think I'm going to lose my job very, very soon. But, you know, famous last words. We'll see. So that's all about the announcement. But also, if you're really curious, here's a video that I talk about more about how I don't think AI is going to replace us as software engineers. But also, I want to start the conversation in the comments. So let me know what you guys think of this advancement and what it's going to look like in the next year or two when we have this kind of technology out here. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.